We're almost there, everybody. We are almost there. Just one more round of Swiss. Swiss round six. And then the elimination begins. Who will make the cut? Who will not make the cut? It comes down to this. It was the Netrunner Cambridge, Massachusetts Regional Tournament 2014 that took place on June 21st at Pandemonium Books and Games. I was there on the left playing Kate. My opponent is on the right playing MBN. The win is yours. Will the win be his, as the card says? Well, asterisk, the win may not be yours. Let's find out. It's a nice Wednesday here in New York. Gonna have some hot dogs for dinner. It's the summertime. They're defrosting. What better way to pass the defrosting time than to watch the Netrunner? Remember what happened. Hmm, did I just mulligan? Let me tell you, these two games right here are really good games. They do not disappoint, if I remember correctly. Uh, how does this go? There's a draw. And rotate in the R&D. Some more drawing. Okay. Astroscript, ice. Okay. What will it be? Oh, okay. That wasn't a mulligan by me. This is the mulligan by me. <laughs> uh, how about that? Let's see. What, what else can we discuss here while we're waiting? So, uh, coming into this round, I have... See, it's the sixth round, so we've already played ten games. Uh, I believe I am... What should my score be? Six and four? I think I'm six and four coming into this round. Uh, so I have 12 prestige out of a possible 20. If I split this round, I will be seven and five. If I lose both, I'll be six and six. So at worst, I can be even on the day. And at best, I could be... 8-4, and four, which is not bad. That's winning 75% of the games uh, for 16 prestige. 16 will probably be definitely enough to make the cut. <laughs> uh, we're going to cut to a top 16 at this tournament. There were 67 players, I believe, after all the math was said and done. All right, we got a double ice and a credit. Sure, Gamble. Money for me, too. And a Diesel. Money and cards. Did I find a useful card? A Dirty Laundry. Well, even more money. And running R&D, no res, access, not a point. Can we see what it was? Oh, it's a sweep sweep. And I just dieseled, so he's going to get four off that. Ice, card, and sweep. There it is. There it is. I'm going to run that remote. Can't let him get away with it. Is that a guard? Looks like a guard to me. Oof. Well, at least I made him pay four for that. And I guess I can't inside job it, but <laughs> what shaper has inside job? It's relatively easy to break if you have a century breaker. So let's test run something. Test run. What do I have that can take care of that? Overmind. All right, let's see how Overmind works, guys. Let's see how it works, everybody. I don't know if this was an optimal play. I just really wanted to use Overmind. <laughs> and, well, I got an answer script with it, so you can't, can't complain about that. So that was click three was the run. I have another click left. The, te the Overmind is going to go back on top of R&D, uh, on top of my stack. 
So let's run with it while we've got it. And uh, yeah, run HQ. There's a pop-up window. I'll pay the one. Access one of the two cards in there. Randomly. RSVP. Well, okay. Overmind goes back up top and is cleared. Okay, so so far, Overmind, not bad. Um, not bad at all. I might have been smarter to install the Overmind and then run. Uh, saving, right? Knowing that whatever was there, um, I could deal with it. But then maybe he wouldn't have raised the ice, right? Uh, I really like that he spent four. All right, so I pick up the Overmind and install it again. Refill. Uh, okay. Running the remote. It's the Sand Sand. I can't trash it. I just had to spend two credits to make sure it wasn't Acid Scripts. Another one. R&D, still no res. Breaking news. All right, so uh, this early aggression, you know, the Overmind, really, you can only play it early because later you're going to have all your memory used up. Uh, so it really helps you get early aggression with safety, uh, some measure of safety at least, right? If you see a roto turret with it, right, you can, uh, you know, let's say you see a roto turret, you can just use your last overmind counter to break the end of the run, let them trash the overmind. There's a lot of things that it helps out with early. Okay, I have a clone ship, so I can refill the overmind if something happens to it. Gonna still run R&D. Toll booth. Okay, well, I don't have three credits, so I don't have to pay anything. Uh, and he paid eight. But doesn't look like uh, I'm going to be able to break through it. So I think my R&D raid days are over temporarily until I find a way to deal with that. Got a parasite in my hand. If only I had a data sucker. Yeah, going into this tournament, I went from three data suckers down to two. That was a bad idea. Uh, in a lot of these games, I was lacking the early data sucker. That is so essential. I gotta go back to three. I don't know how anyone plays with two. I saw a lot of other people playing with two, and I thought, yeah, maybe I should go to two, because what happens in a lot of games is I'll have one early, like I want, and then I'll draw more later, and I'll be like, oh, I'm drawing data suckers. Who wants these? I don't want these. Uh, I already have some, and I didn't lose the ones I have, and so... So I'm like, oh, if I just have two, I can put another card in there to draw later. Yeah, well, if you don't draw the data sucker early, it's upsetting. Okay, so I got the Desperado. That's going to make runs in HQ free for me, but it's going to give him a credit every time I do it. Um, I can also you know, run archives, I guess, for credits. <laughs> yeah, I might as well just take a credit if I'm going to do that. Okay, Parasite, the pop-up window out of the way. Perfect. Now I can run HQ, access a card, and get a credit. I'm going to do that a whole bunch. And a shipment from Sansan. Yep, he drew a bunch of cards, so why wouldn't I do this? Uh, especially since he's got, you know, a hand of six. Um, I got to check a lot. You know, fast track. All right. Simultaneously, right, to doing this, I'm building up money from the Desperado. So when, you know, I get to enough money, it will be possible for me to run the remote, because uh, the Overmind still has counters on it, to run the remote and uh, trash the Sand Sand. Uh, new Ice and HQ. Does that spell the end for Desperado? See, if I had a Data Sucker here, oh man, it would be so hot, right? Because I'd be able to bring out that parasite with the clone ship, take out the toll booth. I I ran at least three times in HQ there. That toll booth would be so toast right now if I had a data sucker. I got a clone ship and a parasite just ready. Data sucker is the only thing that was missing. But it's three nothing. He's got a sand sand. He can't use it yet. Drop the same old thing and run archives because I get a credit for it. I was going to take a credit anyway. And there was a face down card I wanted to see. I thought it might have been an NAPD dump or something like that. Uh, 
It wasn't. It was a closed accounts. I'm happy to see him throw that out. Maybe because they scored his breaking news, he figures the odds of getting the closed accounts to happen are low. If you, that you know, maybe that tells me he doesn't have any way to tag me besides uh, the breaking news, or he, you know, just uh, has another closed accounts in hand. That's possible. Or he's decided to go full fast advance. Up oh, there it is, Bada Glaber. Bada Glaber, the NBN coward's tool. Oh, Bada Glaber, fast track, then use the San San. So Bada Glaber gives him the extra click he needs to get the to play to uh, you play a fast track. He reses the San San for six. Uses the shipment from San San, so install shipment. San San provides the third advancement, and Astro Script is on. Nope. Oh. I guess I have to trash that. And he has an Astro token. All right, looks like I'm running there, paying two, using an Overmind token. Uh, after paying the two, I have four remaining. I get one from Desperado, and then I use all of them to trash the Sand Sand. All right, Sand Sand trash success. He's got one Astro token, and I already stole an Astro. So his fast events uh, capabilities, I guess, are going to be limited to his biotic labor there, uh, which he already spent. Does he have more biotic labor? Uh, I'm guessing his splash is, is three biotics in this deck, because I haven't seen anything else yet. You know, I've seen neutral ice and MBN ice. So running HQ, there's no res. RSVP again. Gonna keep it up. I have a Desperado, so it's really hard not to check HQ. But because he fast tracked uh, to score, that's telling me that there's nothing in there. Do I have enough credits for this? Letting him keep it. I figure. I'll just get more, you know, two more credits. <laughs> I've seen RSVP so many times. Yeah, I mean, I was going to take money on that turn anyway. Um, so, running HQ, even though because of the fast track score, I'm guessing there's, you know, a very low likelihood of an agenda being in there. If I'm going to get my money, I might as well get a bunch of HQ accesses just to make sure, just to see what cards he has. You know, if he plays an ice, um, you know, now I'm guessing it's going to be RSVP. All right, I'm guessing that's the sand, right? See, now, because I ran HQ a bunch, I'm pretty sure that's sand sand. So if I have six credits, I still have one over my token, I can run and trash it. Because two to break the, uh, the guard, one over my token breaks the subroutine. And four credits plus one from Desperado trashes the sand sand. Or... Scores an NEPD. Running HQ. There's a Chimera. So the fact that he res the Chimera on HQ uh, is, is sort of a signal. It could be a bluff that he has an agenda in there um, that he wants to protect. So I use my clone chip to clear it out and resume my access flood. Man, I'm seeing that RSVP a lot. Maybe he's got more than one in his hand. There's an Eli. Wow, he's got a lot of ice. Wow, RSVP. I've seen you a lot. All right, now with my last click, I'm running there. 
spending two in an overmind. See, I collected a bunch of money on HQ. It's the Sand Sand I expected. Goodbye. Very good. Two Sand Sands in the trash. Uh, one Biotic Labor used up. Only two points scored. Astro Token still in play. He just drew a Biotic Labor, though. Well, he has plenty of ice he can put on HQ, um, but he only has three credits there, it looks like. So if I force him to res that, uh, it could be a serious drain. But also, he sees that my overmind is empty, uh, which means now suddenly his guard is back on. I would need to play a scavenge or something to refill uh, my overmind uh, to have any hope of breaking into the remote. So if he, say, top-decked an Astro script there, he could actually just install it behind the guard um, and feel somewhat comfortable. Okay, yeah, he does install something behind the guard. And plays a sweep sweep, so now he's got money, because my hand is full. And all my money's gone, because I just trashed that sand sand. So really good timing there. You know, that I went bankrupt and used my last overmine token on my last click. Oh, no, I think I might have a little bit of money, but not much. What will I do here? I, running HQ? Okay, I made him spend money on his Eli. That's nice. You know, I guess if that was an agenda in the remote, that he would have just... You know, oh, it could be a non-Astro script, but... Um, if it was an Astro script, he could, would have just installed, scored it using the one he already has scored. Uh, as a Beal in hand. Beal alert. Beal alert. <laughs> so because of that, you'd have to think that in the remote is either another San San, uh, an NAPD, or something else. Oh, well, he accidentally showed me a San San in his hand. So I guess we sort of know that the remote isn't one, because we've already gotten rid of two, right? Yep, there's the advance. Okay, so now I'm thinking NAPD for sure. But I don't think there's any way I can get enough money to score it right now, so I guess it's going to have to go. And I have no way to break the guard either. I guess I could... What plays would a Shaper have that could possibly get in there? Well, if I had enough money, I could test run. I don't have enough money. Uh, I could stim hack with an SMC or something like that, but again, I don't have enough money. <laughs> so now I'm playing the Magnum Opus, um, which is not something I actually wanted to play against him, right? It's like I put them in the deck, uh, but my plan was to only use them. I took Plascrete out. Right? And I took Katie Jones out. So my plan with Magnum Opus was to play it if I'm up against uh, a Scorching Wayland or Mid-Seasons, and I recognize it early enough so I can go get the Magnum Opus only against the decks which Magnum Opus... You know, there are certain decks that are really strong, but Magnum Opus beats them on its own. Right? So against those decks, I would go and get it and play it. And against other decks, I would just throw it out and use my other economy. Well... Against this opponent, uh, Magnum Opus is not the right choice. His ice aren't tracing. Um, you know, for me to break ice with money is very expensive and slow. I have inefficient money icebreakers. I'm supposed to use Data Sucker Parasite uh, to break ice. He scores a breaking news out of hand. Okay. But he just put down an NAPD there. Um... So, you know, I need, you know, it's, I want to trash all his stuff, right? I, I had to trash Sand Sands already. I need money for that. So I've sort of been forced to play it against my will. I've got money now, though. Uh, but this is worrying. He's going to score his NEPD? Yep, okay. <laughs> Suddenly it's uh, 5 to 3. 
I guess he scored that because now with an SMC and an Opus and a pile of money. Okay, so we're going to R&D with an indexing. I was just like, all right, do whatever you're going to do over there with your NAPD. I'm going to go index you. So it seems to have worked. Uh, it was just a pop-up window, so I paid one. Then I used the SMC to hopefully fem that toll booth. Indeed, fem the toll booth. I bypass the toll booth for one. I get the one back with Desperado. And I shall index. I know there's no Jackson Howards on the table. So this is a safe index. And I'm accessing R&D for two credits here, so... Not bad. I'm also pretty sure, I mean, we know he has a, me and you both know he has a Beal in hand, because we saw it before, but I didn't know that. I was, you know, I thought the odds of him having an agenda in HQ were pretty low, because uh, just a couple turns, you know, I had been cleaning it out thoroughly, and I saw a bunch of RSVP. So now I see these other cards, I'm going to put them in order. Are any of them scorable? Well, that was a click one index. Nice. And I've got a fem on the table, which means I can break guard for one, which is nice. But if he has any two-point agenda, he wins in one turn because, you know, he has an Astro token. Hey, he's at five points with an Astro token, so... Uh, I guess my indexing didn't see anything, which is bad. And I just some take money. And Beal? Beal, game over. Ah, oh, no. I guess I could have, after indexing and seeing nothing, since we are on game point, I could have tried an HQ run. But what, you know, was I going to double click the Eli of one chance and six on the one agenda? that I thought he didn't even have. I was actually kind of happy when I indexed slightly and seeing no agendas because I'm like, oh, good. It'll take him a while to draw a game point. I'm getting into R&D for two credits. Um, you know, I can take eight, wait for him to pass the index cards, uh, and then I know all the agendas are lower than that. I could same old thing index. I already had the same old thing on the table, so I was going to index the next five uh, I felt like that was a good position. He just had that agenda in hand. Uh, I guess, you know, was I, did I have bad HQ ac accessing luck? Were those agendas in there while I was accessing? Um, you know, did, you know, the two turns I spent after trashing that sand sand and going, you know, right after the turn I stopped running HQ? Is that when he drew all the agendas? I mean, R&D was protected behind that toll booth safely up until my last turn. Uh, so he did draw plenty of, you know, cards I didn't see, <laughs> and he scored all of them, so. Uh, but a Glaver, grrr, grrr, so lame, so lame. It's much more thrilling to play NBN my way without buy a Glaver. In my opinion. I think it's also more fun, too. Just seeing the runner close the counts. Mm. Seeing them run that remote over and over again until they run out of resources. And then you score the Astro script without Biotic Labor. It's like, yeah, that's right. I can do it. You saw that other game uh, where the guy took six and ran, R &D, ran the remote every single turn. Uh, and my Caduceus got the job done. Even though he had three link, that's a much I don't know it's I, it's much more satisfying to play that way. I've played the Baddock Labor deck, and it wins, but you know the win is yours. <laughs> the win was his. But it's just it's just not satisfying to play it. I don't mind playing against it though because it's satisfying to beat it when you do, which is not never, right? Okay. Yeah. Great draw here, install, install, sweep. He's Gabe. So he's going for the early sneak door. 
Sneak away, Gabe. Sneak away. There's a pad campaign. Go ahead and trash it. Oh, I didn't think so. Yeah, it's a lot of money, isn't it? Especially when I haven't spent a click and a credit turning it on yet. Uh, why would you, you know, you're spending four. That's even better for me. Hedge fund. Ooh, look at this great draw I have. Really good draw. Gonna stop that sneak door action, install what's probably a pad campaign, and play the hedge fund that he has seen. Got some cards in my hand. If I remember correctly, I actually think that those cards in my hand are agendas. I think it actually might be an Astro and a Beal or something, and I got lucky uh, <laughs> that he didn't take him on his sneak door. Okay, so he runs HQ. There's an Eli. Now, the Eli doesn't keep him out of HQ. He could double-click it, which isn't too bad considering that he's Gabe. It also means he can account siphon. Oh, nope. My last remaining card is a closed account, so I don't have agendas in hand. Uh, my last, right? So, but if he account siphons and double clicks the Eli, that means he can't remove the tags, and I'm holding a closed account. So, even though Eli doesn't strictly end the run, it doesn't guarantee block an account siphon or turn Gabe's ability off or anything like that. Uh, it definitely doesn't turn off emergency shutdown, uh, which is very important. But... I do like the fact that it guarantees that if they try to siphon and double click, that you will be able to close accounts and they'll remain tagged. Okay, so I drew up my hand. He sneaked doors. Pop up window. He's happy to pay one for the pop up window and get back two. He accesses a. Was that a pop up window? <laughs> oh, yeah, pop up window. Sure, Gamble. Okay, Gabe's back, got money again. Desperado. Oh, okay. So if he uses Sneak Door now, he's the one for pop up windows canceled out by Desperado. And then he's going to get two. Uh, so let's put some more ice on archives, some more ice in HQ, and some more ice in RD. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, yeah. One of those is pop up window. <laughs> Can you guess which one? That's putting the hurt on. That is serious business right there. Mostly because I, you know, I have so much money here, right? Uh, I played a sweeps and a hedge. I have a pad campaign that's remained resed and safe, and he ran through my pop-up window. Uh, the only credits I've spent are three on the Eli and one for the pad campaign. I started with five, so I am rolling in it. Gonna start my remote game now. All he's got is that fairy. Okay, he's gonna play knight. Did he use two clicks to set up that knight? Huh, I wonder. Anyway, knight the pop-up window. Go ahead. Yeah, you'll make a profit of one sneak dooring, and I'll get two. Every time you sneak door, you'll get one credit, I'll get two credit. Oh, you got my Astro script, so luck. So spice. Well, I got his Astro script too, right? I think, oh, did I? I don't remember. <laughs> Even though I just watched that game. Okay, remote time. Remote time, Mr. Gibb. There, Gabe. So install in the remote, draw, and install something else in the remote. I was trying to remember, and I did a pretty good job of remembering to draw early. Okay, so the knight moves over there, which I totally knew was going to happen. Uh, there was no surprise about that. Money comes off Armitage. And he's running the remote, of course. I do res. Caduceus. 
Yeah, pay four credits with your knight to break all those subroutines. Expensive, isn't it? Or, let us play the trace game. Would you like to do that? That's another option that I'll be perfectly happy to do. Or you can pay two credits to break the on the run and we'll trace for money. I'm happy with that as well. I'm pretty much happy no matter what you do. Knight on Caduceus is great. He breaks it, and it's Ash time. Do you want to trash Ash and spend three more credits? Ah, oh, the taxing comes. So good. What happened to all your money, Sir, Sir Gabe? <laughs> you can't get your profitable HQ runs. Alright, goodbye, Ash, but... Huh, there's something still in that remote that's still there. Senor Howard. Senor Howard. Oh, I love it. I love it. That was a great play. Uh, when I made that play, he was like, ooh, nice. Nice bluff, right? Because basically it looks like I'm trying to protect San San, or it looks like I'm trying to score an Astro, right? But it's Mr. Howard. So basically I got him to spend four credits on Caduceus, three on Ash, four on Caduceus again, or at least two more on Caduceus, right? I think he might have let me have the three credits on it. Um, and then, oh, it's Mr. Howard to get back transactions I wanted to get back anyway. How many credits does he have? Three. And as the Armitage has not too many left on it either. Still have my pad campaign. I think it might have been the only thing I can say about this game so far in terms of misplay. Uh, I don't want to sound jerky, but I think I've been playing pretty great. <laughs> uh, but that's because my draw is amazing. It's, it would be hard to play this, this great draw wrong. The only misplay I think he's done so far is he could have just spent a click at some point to just run R&D. Make me res something. Let me see what's there, right? Um, you know, force me to spend some money on that. I know I'm putting up heavy pressure here by and keep constantly installing things in the remote. But, you know, one click to run R&D, force me to res, or maybe get an access, isn't going to hurt you. Especially if you're Desperado, maybe I won't res, you'll get a credit. Maybe you'll score, who knows. Just one, one click at some point uh, could have been spent to run R&D. He hasn't even run it once. He runs, Caduceus, Ash again. Got lucky here. I only have two ashes in the deck. Uh, well, I guess I jacksoned uh, one of them back in. And he trashes it. And that's the end of his turn. It's breaking news. Close the counts. I was perfectly fine if somehow he managed to score that. I just wanted to close his accounts. I think is, and I did that closed accounts. The reason I could have tried the closed accounts first instead of the Jackson, um, but the reason I did it there is because Armitage was down to two credits on it. Uh, see, he only got so if I close his accounts when his Armitage is full, I can't close the accounts and also trash Armitage in the same turn. So if Armitage is loaded, closing the accounts and then he just clicks Armitage a bunch. Okay, here comes the R and D run we've been waiting for, and no res pop up window. Access Quandary. Once his Armitage was really empty, then a closed accounts is much more devastating. He might have another Armitage uh, in his hand, but um, I don't know about that. All three pop up windows on the board. I love it. 
You know, he could have used his fairy to break the Caduceus instead of the knight uh, all this time. But that's sort of a one-shot. Uh, I guess if he suspects something back there, like Ash or something, um, you know, and he absolutely needs the money to be able to access it, right? Like, what if that breaking news is an Astro Strip? That would have scored it. You know, if, if using the fairy up, uh, sacrificing it meant that he could access that, that might have been a, a good idea. You know, instead of the knight, if the knight was somehow a click slower. Install my remote again, and sweep. See, even though this remote is not secure, I'm perfectly happy to install things in it that are not agendas, because it's so hard for him to get in there. He's either got to use his fairy up, like I just uh, said, or spend a lot of money with that knight. And I closed his accounts pretty recently, so... I think what it, he has two credits, so he's going to dirty laundry my pad campaign. So obviously he can't trash it, uh, but he does gain three, uh, four credits, uh, right, with one click, which is not bad. Then he's going to go for R&D again. Okay, so he is checking R&D. Toll booth. I can put a toll booth in R and D all as well. And the reason I didn't res it before is because he didn't. I don't think he had the three credits. Uh, but now, right, I'll take away those credits you just got from your uh, dirty laundry there with my booth. You definitely can't break. And I think we did. We just see an indexing in his hand. Uh, it's possible. So. You know, if I didn't res it then, I definitely would have resed it if he played indexing. He's checking the remote. Using his remaining monies. He let me have the three on the Caduceus, and it was a pad campaign. See, look at that. The remote is insecure. I can't really use it for, um, you know, for, for too much now, right? Because I can't, like, put an Astro in there. It's just going to score it, even though it's expensive. I uh, put the pad campaign in there, face down. Because it could be Astro, he's got to check it. So that's, you know, became a taxing server, right? As opposed to a scoring remote. And now I'll start a real remote. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> he's got to spend a click to move his knight, then run it, then deal with the ice, then deal with what's underneath. And I've got two pad campaigns rolling now. I think he was also letting me have the three credits on the Caduceus sometimes when he ran the remote. Which is beautiful. I got a lot of money. He doesn't have a lot of money. Alright, he's moving his knight. So assuming there's only one end the run subroutine on that ice, he's taking a credit. It's a quandary. Okay, so he can spend two to deal with the quandary. He does so. There's Ash. I don't think he can even afford to trash Ash at this point. So, ah, uh, power Ash right there, right? It's one thing for them to, you know, have to pay three to trash him and run again. But it's something else for him to just stay there. Uh, to block up the server for even longer. Oh, am I just not getting agendas? I mean, I've only scored the one breaking news so far. I, I could have, you know, there's no reason that Ash couldn't have been a scoring play right there. Throwing something out, installing something else. Wow. What was that that I just threw out? I think it was Jackson Howard. I was doing the same move again. Right? Because basically he's already shown me that he's going to run every remote to make sure I can't score anything. 
So, boom. Now I can kill off the knight. My quandary only cost me one, but it cost him two. I'll double ice the server so your fairy ain't getting you anything. And I've got an ash in there too. And you hardly have any money, even though you just got a new armitage. That feels like I'm going to score. And I advance. Is that an NAPD I'm going for? <laughs> so I guess on that turn it was install ice, install ice, advance. Uh, did I take an extra click that turn? That's a good question. I may have cheated. <laughs> I don't know. Someone go back and tell me. I don't want to. I don't want to rewind. Okay, what is happening now? He's going to run the remote. With just a fairy? It's another Caduceus. How about that? Man, Caduceus is so strong when they don't have three Link or a Mimic. That's the thing, right? It's like if they have Mimic or Link, it becomes, you know, kind of pointless. But against anything, pretty much anything else, uh, it's ridiculously strong. I guess a Femme with a Data Sucker, it can... You know, he uses fairy on the first one. He does have money, thanks to Armitaging. Am I not rezzing? Okay, Ashtray 6. I think I did the math here. I think it's an NEPD. And I think that with the trace of six uh, on Ash, if he trashes and runs again, right, that's not going to work out for him because the Caduceus is there. If he beats the Ash trace, uh, I don't think he will have enough to score the NEPD. It was, I don't think there's any reason for me to res that second ice uh, in this situation. Unless he plays an inside job and somehow has enough credits. Okay. So I'll score my NAPD going up to three. Sneak Doran. Look at this. There has been no fast advance for me this game at all, right? It's 100% old school remote scoring. No Sans Sans. You know, the other game I drew all the sand sands, this game, none. No sand sands. No nothing. I think that might be one in my hand right there, but so far I haven't fast advanced, I haven't astro tokened. Even the breaking news, I installed it on the table and then scored it. Alright, he's got a new Knigget available. For the sixth round, both of us are playing exceptionally well, right? Having already been here for so long and played for so many hours. Um, you know, it's surprising for such a good game to come out in such a late round. You know. Okay, is he going to go for a siphon here? Oh, legwork. He's going for a legwork. Yeah, I guess, you know, that's not a bad idea, right? The only agendas he's seen from me, besides the Astro that he took, are the NAPD and the breaking news. I've drawn a lot 
odds are I'm just holding on to agendas, uh, you know, right? It's like if you just looked at my board without seeing my hand and the way I've played, it really looks like... Oh, <laughs> it really looks like I'm holding agendas waiting for fast advance. Two pad campaigns. That's a San San. That's a Beal. Okay, so there is some fast advance going on here. I'm at five. He's at two. No Astro scripts. And I have a Rez San San. Uh, can he get rid of that San San? Did he just miss that Beal on his legwork? I think I actually top decked that Beal. All right, he's going for the siphon. Draco, the ultimate anti-siphon equipment. Dump all my money into the Draco. Boom. I guess that makes it strength four, three, four, three. I think I had four credits, which makes it a strength three Draco. I would have liked it to make it strength eight so that his knight uh, couldn't break it, but I just didn't have enough money. I would have gladly made it a strength eight Draco. I have no problem with that. Uh, so he's not siphoning. He's just going to access his one card and take his three Gabe credits. Okay. Uh, but he has a shutdown. He had a shutdown. So it's click one, siphon, click two and three, break Eli, click four, uh, shut down Tollbooth. And I top deck a Beal. I use the two credits from the pad campaigns to score it, even though I spent all my money in the previous turn in the Draco. And that's the game. That is the game. Corpse split, MBN is strong. That's round six. Get ready. Elimination is about to begin.